Hi, my name is Dean Wingerchuk. I'm a neurologist at Mayo Clinic in Arizona, and I'm going to talk to you today about current treatments and future treatments for multiple sclerosis. One can think about treatment options for multiple sclerosis in four different categories. The first is treatment for attacks or exacerbations of the disease. The second is treatments that try to prevent the disease from getting worse over time. Third is treatment for symptoms. And fourth are future treatments for repair of nervous system damage. So in the first set of treatments, we will discuss about uh, treatment of relapses or exacerbations. This is when people are having an acute new attack of multiple sclerosis with new symptoms. For example, double vision or trouble with balance or walking. In that event, we sometimes will use corticosteroid drugs, prednisone type therapies, either intravenously or by mouth, because these medications can speed up the recovery from an acute attack. At Mayo Clinic, we sometimes see people who have very devastating attacks of multiple sclerosis, which is not very common. But when that does occur and the treatment with corticosteroids doesn't work, we'll sometimes utilize a treatment called plasma exchange. Plasma exchange is a treatment where uh, the person has uh, intravenous lines placed in their veins and is hooked up to a dialysis type machine that removes blood, takes the antibodies and other liquid materials out of the blood and then replaces it. One can think of it as taking sort of the evil humors out of the blood and just replacing the good parts. And that's been shown in studies done at Mayo Clinic to improve um, the recovery from the most severe attacks. The second area of treatment is treatments to try to prevent MS from getting worse. Generally speaking, the treatments that are approved by the FDA all have in common the fact that they can reduce the chances of people having these exacerbations or attacks. Right now, all of the treatments that we have uh, available to us that are approved by the FDA are either self-injections, injections under the skin or in the muscle, or intravenous therapies. The first-line therapies tend to be um, the interferon medications. Uh, they're called beta interferons, and they're uh, again administered um, by the patient themselves, sometimes by a caregiver, under the skin or in the muscle, a variety of different times per week. A fourth medication called Copaxone or Glutirimer is also a, a, a self-injection under the skin. Many patients begin with one of those therapies, but sometimes they won't work and will move along to a, uh, a second or third line treatment. There, the approved therapies include natalizumab, which is an IV drug given every month, or mitoxantrone or novantrone, which is an intravenous chemotherapy or immune suppressant that is given every three months for a limited time. Again, the goal of all of these therapies is to try to reduce the number of attacks and the severity of attacks to preserve function. Some people who have a progressive form of multiple sclerosis who don't have any or very few attacks anymore, but have a gradual change in their function, might be offered one or more of these treatments uh, to try to slow the progression of the disease. But unfortunately, that's a more challenging type of multiple sclerosis for us to treat at present. Some of the most exciting work in neurology right now is being done in multiple sclerosis. It's in this realm of preventative therapy. Uh, we're on the verge of having approval of several oral medications, the first oral drugs for MS, some of which are novel drugs with new mechanisms that not only we think will help our patients with multiple sclerosis, but will help us learn more about the disease and develop even more effective therapies. Now, many people need these, these um, uh, therapies to prevent relapses and progression of the disease but they also need treatment to help symptoms. That's the third area of treatment I mentioned earlier. Common symptoms include fatigue, bladder trouble, uh, gait uh, difficulty, or uh, pain. And the neurologist that you see will inquire about each of these types of symptoms and then may have treatments to offer that are specifically targeted to try to relieve those symptoms. Uh, one exciting new development is the recent FDA approval of a drug called 4-aminopyridine or dalfampridine, which is a pill that's been shown in studies to help people who have walking impairment walk faster. And this, of course, uh, can, promises to improve quality of life for individuals affected with gait disorders from multiple sclerosis. The fourth and final area of treatment I'll, rec I'll uh, mention today 
is the area of repair or remyelination. Uh, multiple sclerosis is a demyelinating disease. The myelin on the nerves, the insulation on the nerves is damaged, and that's what generates the, uh, the clinical symptoms of multiple sclerosis. Uh, there's a lot of basic laboratory investigation that's getting closer and closer to clinical practice now in experimental studies where we're trying to find ways to repair the nervous system, repair damage that's already been done. And that's the next generation of MS treatments.